No, you are not imagining things. My twin brother is here. Okay, just kidding. This is George, my good buddy, comic book creator, band member, and he's going to be joining us today to go over some of his books that he have um, that he's created. Uh, they're lined up in the back there, a whole bunch of them. Talk about his newest creation that will be doing a Kickstarter soon, um, and also go over some of the books that inspired him and some of the books that uh, he's been collecting lately. So, George, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Let's go. All right. See you in a minute. I wrote the intro. He did. He wrote the intro. You're going to be playing it. Ready? The intro is going to play right now. Hello and welcome to Swarm of Comics. I am Randy, your gorgeous and grounded host. And today joining me is George O'Connor. Say hello to George, everyone. I guess this isn't like a live audience thing. They're not gonna- I can hear him in my head. Yeah. There's... The applause is deafening. It's almost embarrassing. <laughs> so we have a lot to go over today. I'm not even gonna try and give you an agenda, but George is not only one of my best friends, but also who I started my band with, Swarm of Eyes. Thus, I stole the name for a Swarm of Comics. I didn't think anybody was ever going to watch this. I didn't know I was going to get this many subscribers and viewers. So I didn't really think it through. But here we are with Swarm of Comics. And no, it doesn't really make any sense. So George, I uh, started the band with George. I've known George since 1994. George is a huge comic book fan, but also a creator. Um, like I mentioned in the intro video, this whole lineup is a bunch of books that over the years mostly autographed uh, the many different projects George has worked on. And today we're going to let him talk about those, talk about his newest project that I already pointed at it, is Vampires on Mars. Um, also, George has been starting to collect and get into yeah. some slab books. So he hasn't gotten slab happy like I have, no, but no. but he's got some great stuff. And um, funny enough, I might want to get some things slabbed of your books um, because that'd just be fun and great to display. So yeah. um, it would have been nice if these were all slabbed, but instead we rushed to put them in bags and boards so they display them beautiful, you know, no. a little behind the but scenes. It, there. But I, I, I told you before, it, it it's kind of cool to see all of that stuff laid out. So I've been making comics since... Um, about 2010 and you know you kind of you're when you're in the maker mode you're like you finish the project so you can start the new project and it's something i'm getting trying to get better on but like sitting back and kind of like taking inventory this is this is a very kind of cool reminder of the amount of stuff that i've been able to create with with other fantastic creators and artists yeah and that's not including a, a bunch of us so he has no that's about half stuff. that's yeah. legit about half that is half <laughs> uh, he has a lot of trades he put out a great yeah. trade uh a compilation trade called toddler apocalypse with an amazing cover i don't know where my box of trades is otherwise i would have absolutely gotten that out but maybe we'll just put a jpeg of it up right there an image for you all to view look at can you see it it's Toddler Apocalypse. Plus, we can share some other books, too. So it's George O'Connor. You can find him on what socials? Um, I'm still on Twitter at Lazy Horde. Um, if you want to know more about the comics, you can go to homelesscomics.com. Uh, and that's, you can get free previews of all the books up there as well. Homelesscomics.com. So please, we all love Marvel Comics. Some people like DC Comics. Uh, Image and Independence, but but... There's so many independent creators, it's tough for them to get shelf space in stores. Distributors just don't pick them up. The, I mean, you can barely get them things out there. So this is important. I know you guys have followed me here talking about my slabs or my books that I'm getting, but I want to make it known that I'm a, a fervent supporter. Uh, I'm not actually not sure what that word means, but I'm a, a, a big supporter. Say it confidently. Say, I say it. right. You got to fake it, say make it. Um, uh, of independent books and especially creators yeah. and especially someone I love like George. So Excellent. please make sure you go check out homelesscomics.com. Find George at all the comic cons that, yeah. that he's at, mostly all in the Northeast. Um, and uh, even comment here if you're interested. Again, he's on Twitter at Lazy Horde. Uh, it's Horde. L-A-Z-Y-H-O-R-D. That's with a D. Horde. Um, we import that. <laughs> so um, it as George said, he's been doing this since 2010 and yeah. putting out um, 
all these different books and this is just a, a fraction of some of them yeah. um you'll notice that there aren't superhero stories here yeah there's an amazing um variety of the stuff uh george has worked on um the first one that i really remember was your book heal yeah um I, I don't want to, we, we, you know, I, I want to, I want to go over every single one, but I think it's good for maybe to just touch on a couple of these yeah, major sure. products. I love, like I loved healed. I loved baby and the Charlie spot was so different. I feel like I want to say the award-winning Charlie spot because it just like flows so well. Thank you. Also, we have a different camera angle so we can fit all this in. So you guys can see I'm actually wearing pants. Cause I know you never know. And you must be wondering yourself, is he wearing pants? Do you think he's wearing pants? I am. It was sorry. A writer. I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, so the first project that I remember you really working on and getting out that I was super excited for was Healed. And you also yeah. did another little project, Healed Related. So I want to hear. Yeah, sure. Hear about and, that. you know, to, to bring it to the story, um, you know, one of the first books I ever got slabbed was my own for Healed number one. Um, yeah. So Healed, the, the story. What did you get for grade? Uh, nine six. You didn't even get a nine eight? I know. And this is this is what kills me. Like, legit. From the manufacturer, from the box to which one was the CBCS, who is known and, for giving you, you know, nicer grades than you probably yeah, deserve, and, yeah. and and lost a point too, going straight from the shipment to the slab. Um, but yeah, so mine has no yeah. chance of being a no, nine. no, but that's OG. I mean, that's that. I mean, that's yeah, that's original. Um, so Hilda is what would happen tomorrow if all life-threatening disease and illness disappeared today. Um, so kind of a grounded sci-fi story that we wanted to tell. Um, I don't know if you remember the HBO series, The Leftovers. I do. It's one of my favorite shows yeah. of all time. Yeah. So if that... you haven't watched The Leftovers, season one is amazing. Yeah. Season two gets you through. And season three is so otherworldly, I can't put it into words. I think there was a big delay. I'm sorry to tangent. There was a big delay in the release of those seasons. And yeah. I think people dropped off. Yeah. The leftovers. And now that you say that, yeah. it's very leftovers. So. Yeah. So, you know, big sci-fi premise. Everybody wakes up one morning and, you know, if you had cancer the night before, it's gone. And nobody knows what happened or how, you know, how it happened, who caused it. We were more interested in playing around with, well, what happens next? Right. Like if so Not if, how did it happen. Right. Right. And, you know, stole that from the best, Robert Kirkman, telling you, I'm never going to tell you how the zombie disease in Walking Dead started because that's boring. What if you haven't heard of Walking Dead, it's a very yeah. well-known book, also underground independent. You should pick that one up too. Yeah, you know, and so, you know, it seemed to work well for him. And he was right. Like the the why behind, you know, how did it happen? That's the boring stuff. You know, midichlorians were much more cool when it was the force. Yeah. You know? Star Wars reference. <laughs> I do not uh, have any midichlorian yeah. tattoos yet. So, so, but putting people, I like putting like normal people in r ridiculous situations or, you know, unusual situations and seeing what happens. So, you know, all of a sudden all disease and illness is gone. What happens next? Um, and it's, and it, I remember correctly, because it's been a little bit since I read it. It's a, there's, it's a, it's each issue has a number of short stories, but yeah. one running story yes. also throughout. Yeah. So kind of a pseudo anthology vibe where we just kind of bounce around the world and how it would affect big things from the pharmaceutical industry down to, you know, a story about a grandma waking up in the nursing home and she's lucid for the first time in seven years right. and kind of like realizing how the world has yep. left her behind. How does it affect religion? Yeah. Um, does it make people question religion or get further behind it? And, and what do we do if everybody's healed? Remember yep. the book's called Healed. I want to hold it up again because yeah, I like it. It's called Healed. And as George said, everybody wakes up one day and it's suddenly all illness is gone. Everybody who is hurt, injured, dying is back. And let me tell you, there's some gut punch stories in this. This is not all like, yay, Nan is healed. It's not that simple. And even when Nan is healed, we make it emotionally painful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The best compliment uh, I got uh, is I wrote, I well, that story about the grandma waking up and, you know, Alzheimer's is cured is a friend of mine punched me in the shoulder it's like you made me cry and it hurt and i took that as like the best compliment i could get that I, I i pushed somebody to punch me because you know i made them feel a thing yeah um and so that's where it started it it literally started with the first issue of healed and going to boston comic-con in 2010 with you know one book 
for whatever. Wasn't it still in Boston Comic Con? Was in the it basement was, of the it, hotel? Yes. Uh, it had, it had, I, it had graduated enough that we had natural light that year. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we brought some com some copies, and it was like, well, let's see if anybody else finds this idea interesting. Yeah. And enough people did that we took it. Uh, Griffin S is the artist and co-creator. We ended up doing five Hi, issues Griffin. of Field. Yeah, you know, and that was that was the beginning of it. Yep, um, and I love the cover as you guys saw. Yeah, it's the again Griffin it's the headline. It's very very headline. You know, people walk yeah. on the moon. The Titanic sinks. It's I think yeah. that was a, a a brilliant idea and in a very eye catching. Oh, and again, all all yeah. credit to Griffin. I was like, what would you think about this? And you know, that I mean, that's the it's why I love comics and why I love making them is the alchemy between the different creative disciplines. Yep, you know. Um, tossing an idea to Griffin and like, what do you think about this? And letting him take his expertise and his own lived experience and taking that idea and blowing it up into something like it's, we're bordering on 15 years of this cover. Right. And it is, it still stops people. Right. And you said something that was important to me is because I'm not a writer. Um, you gave me a blank piece of paper and said, write an idea wouldn't happen. Um, I can make thumbnails all day long for YouTube videos. Those are creative. I'm waiting for my award. Just present me my award, George. I Please. know it's there somewhere. Um, the thummies. <laughs> right. So I don't think about these things. Like you guys have seen, my brother Bill on here is also a writer. His yep. He's signed to a contract in his first book. Um, is going to be published. So you guys have this writer mind, and you said something that just caught my attention, is that Griffin, his the artist, but also cre co-creator, absolutely pulling from his real-life experiences, doesn't matter where it's a supernatural story, I think that writers, whether you're writing movie scripts, TV scripts, novels, comic books, yeah. you have to be a pull from real life experiences yeah. and things like that. And I guess I don't think about that. I think to myself, wow, where did they get these amazing ideas and characters? Yeah. You, you know, it's the Judd Aptow thing. You come to find out it's him and his friends. You know, what was the Napoleon Dynamite movie? Literally, that was the two guys who write the movies, the brothers, their life yeah. growing up and all the people they knew. So, you know, yes, it's in a way supernatural, but ground in reality and and something that came from from you guys yeah and I, when i think when comics works best and and you know what i have found making comics has made me like a, I, I hope a better bandmate and creator there is the idea of i realize i'm a collaborator not a director not a dictator so i'm addicted to throwing an idea out there and seeing other creative people add to it right you know, um, in in Swarm of Eyes in the band, what comics helped me realize is like going to Tommy, our drummer, or Jeff, our bass player, and saying, you know, rather, I think old George would have been like, play this drum part, play this bass part. Right. Now I've realized it's more important to go, I'm looking for, I'm looking for this. Yeah. I'm looking for this vibe, this take, yeah. this attack. How would you get to that target? Right. And then, so what ends up happening is like, not only do you get to that target, it's in a way you never would have imagined because they're the expert on the drums. They're the expert, they're right. the expert bass player. They're the expert artist, colorist. Yeah. So give them the target, yeah. you know, set up and the trust. guardrails and trust. That's, that's the huge thing. Yep. The more you, and it's, it's bringing it back to Star Wars, the more you can like release your grip, the better the thing right. comes out. Right. And, and if you don't know, and I'm sure you do, George Lucas made Star Wars, which is absolutely amazing and my favorite movie of all time. And I saw it in the theaters in 1977, but it's still well known that Empire Strikes Back was a better movie and it wasn't directed by George no. Lucas and he let control yeah. go and just trusted these people who were experts and they made an even That's better it. product. Yeah. You hire experts, point then he, in a direction, then get he, the hell Then he took away. control back and we got midi chlorians. <sighs> Fun fact, the, <laughs> the midi chlorian detector, the test kit thing is actually a ladies shaver razor. And they just painted and added some doodads. Watch it again and look it up. It's a ladies razor. Anyway, fun facts here on Swarm of Comics. So, now you work with Griff for a bunch of products, yes. projects, including Baby, Baby which the is second a great. One um, to me, it's it's very obviously very Loch Ness monster, very you know, um, what was the? We uh, kind of put it like it's it's Clifford meets Godzilla. Clifford meets Godzilla. It's a little baby, and what happens? You know, people want to take advantage of it. People want to display it. People want to rescue it. And where's Mama? Because <laughs> that's just the baby. 
Um, and then you started branching out. And as you got bigger and more yeah. popular, you, like you said, trust the creators. You started yeah. working with new creators uh, like Charlie Spot. And yeah. um, I mean, if you haven't seen it yet, you can see it right behind me here. Uh, give me the elevator pitch for Charlie Spot and the sure. creator you uh, worked with. Crazy work. So um, Charlie Spot is about a homeless veteran who do has- you rated one? Uh, yeah, I do. If you if you mind. I will hold it while I tell Thanks. you something. Um, so Charlie Spot is about a homeless veteran who has his prized busking spot in the city park stolen from him. And it's the ridiculous and over-the-top adventure he goes on through the city and the evil suburbs to figure out who stole his spot and how to get it back. And all the characters, cast the characters that go along, yeah. the, along the way. Actually, can you take that? Yeah, because absolutely. I think one of the covers has some of the characters with him. I'm going to get up and go. Yeah. Back. So oh, there it is on the postcard. Whoops. That's not a 9.8 anymore, folks. <laughs> I, I got some. You, you can see it down here. He's got yeah. this, kind of this cast of characters. Of, I mean, it's New York City, right? Uh, it it's a mix of New York City and Boston Common. Boston Common. Got it. So you get, I yeah. mean, the cast of characters. You have street entertainers. You have homeless yeah. people. You've got whatever it is. So I, I remember that was the biggest thing that stood out is this cast of characters going along with him trying to get a spot. There. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of call it a magical reality slice of life type of book. Um no supernatural. Right. And, you know, the story within the story on that one is, like, the belief that, you know, we're, like, more alone than we think we are, that, you know, there's something wrong with us that kind of makes us unworthy of love or friendship, that type of thing. But if you kind of turn around, you'll see the number of people that have your back and care about you. Right. Um, and I'm sure you see that when you're trying to get a project ready and George... Yeah. Loves doing Kickstarter campaigns. Yeah. And if you've ever supported him before, if you know about him, George will say, hey, I've got this new comic. If you guys support me, here's my goal. And yeah. you got to meet that goal that you've set for yourself. Otherwise, the project, you don't get anything. Yeah. And you end up having, um, you give tiers. The first tier is, hey, if you donate 10 bucks, you get a, a copy of the issue. 20 bucks gets you a pin, a copy, and a digital copy. And all the way up to like original art. Yeah, if, we've if done there's that a couple of times. So you must think to yourself, do you ever have any like, is anybody going to support this oh, and this? And then all of a sudden you realize how many I people mean, are behind you supporting you yeah. and there for you. Yeah. Um, and you're not alone. Right. I mean, I mean, we just, you know, what, as of this recording, you know, two days ago we had a gig and there was definitely, I have no idea if anybody's going to come out and see us, you know, and then literally we're on stage looking at each other. Like, there are a lot of people here and they seem to like us. People seem to uh, see us play. Yeah. It's, Thank you, know, you everyone. I'm so appreciate it. That was a great night, Saturday night, Friday night. Um, yeah, it's it's so doing this for 14 years and doing kind of like a core three shows every year. Like, you know, we're a staple of Fan Expo Boston, Trivicon down in Connecticut. Um because we've been there every year, there are people that we've now seen for like 10 years in a row. And it might only be a 10 or 15 minute conversation once a year, but we've been having that 10 or 15 minute conversation for 10 years. Um, and it's been very cool to see those people like excited to see us, you know, that, yeah. they, that, and that see what new of, things you have. There's that too. I mean, that's, that's amazing that, you know, there's a, handful of people that have graduated to the oh great you're here what's new yeah. and like i don't have to pitch the book anymore i just kind of point at the thing and they're like here's my money yeah and that's the, you know we're you know talking about you know what's real and everything like that's that's real someone showing up to a you know fan expo boston is that tens of thousands of people and i'm you know i say this humbly because it's really uncomfortable to say Humble there are answer. there are people who show up to the show and we're on their to-do list yeah like finding us and checking in with us that's amazing yep. you know and watching these the kickstarters grow over the years um watching you know my audience my newsletter grow is you know it's you know i've got an artist brain which means you know then nobody cares you know all that you know boo-boo face stuff um but, i care I, like legit that's it's like yeah you since the beginning you have been there for like everything and yeah. that's that's real um and so that's the type of stuff that like fills i try to fill the books with you know kind of like the those those real feel those universal feelings yeah and then wrap them up in a homeless guy you know chasing around a dude in a bear suit and it yeah. all makes sense yeah 
Was that based off of Kitar Bear from a Boston? Little, a little bit. A For little those bit. who don't know <laughs> around Boston area, just Google Kitar yeah. Bear. He's a guy dressed in a bear suit who plays the Kitar, yeah. which is a guitar keyboard. So that's enough out of that. Now, that's all leading up to what I have on my shirt. Yes. Which is Vampires on Mars. Now, yes. I'm going to give a little of my background here. George and I talked... Oh, what feels like a million years ago. Yes. Um, and this is important to me to find out and ask. There was a reason for saying that. I put together some logos for him. It's this sort of 1950s pre-code horror, sci-fi sort of look logo. B-movie. Yep, yep. B-movie. I like doing the logo. You're not going to be able to... Oh, it's not on there. Or is it on the back? What's that? No. Oh, this isn't a homeless comic. No. For Homeless Comics, I created the logo a long time ago and I like doing it and I want to support my friends and, uh, and being kind, kind of a creator to a, a contributor to a comic was cool. So I made this logo for Vampires on Mars. We went back and forth and George did that thing. I don't know if you ever work with your friends and they want to do something for you. So I said, here's like five or six ideas that are similar. And George did one of those things where you want to make changes or could you do this? But you're like, well, he's doing this like for free and he's spending all this time. So I don't want to bother him. But I'm like, no, 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 bother me. Right. I want you to have something and I, I want to create it. So I felt like that was a million years ago. Yeah, and there was been a ton of other projects since. Yeah. And then all of a sudden this got revived recently. And I want you to go over the idea because I actually think I have the idea of the book. But when I was talking to you the other day, I might have got it wrong. Okay. So I want you to go over it. But... Sure. There's a part of this book. So George has been releasing pages, um, whether it's on Twitter, I don't know, but I definitely know that's been in his newsletter, newsletter yeah. and so forth. Some previews from his artist. He can talk about the artist. It's got a, it's very interesting because it's got a modern premise with a B movie sort of logo and look, but then also a very manga art inspired. Yeah, yeah. It is. So we're hitting a lot of the buttons here. Hey, manga fan, sci-fi fan. We're, you know, um, but there's one idea from one of the pages that I saw mm -hmm. about the billionaire. Yeah. And it felt like such a modern new idea. Was that a recent ad to sort of parody real life or was that in the original story? That That's an update. So okay. I'll try and give you the long story short. Um, so Vampires on Mars is about a 300 year old vampire who is battling an idiot billionaire uh, chaotic astronauts and and troublesome humans in her quest to finally get to Mars. Um, so that's the that's kind of like the big B movie sci fi portion of it. Plus, you know, when you call something vampires on Mars, there's an expectation of you know. I do like a good title that like look, you're either in or you're out just based off the title. Right. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I first know seeing the title and so forth, my assumptions was this was like the original original. Is it I Am Legend where the spaceship ends up on oh. the other planet and it's full of vampires? No. And how do you survive? No. This is the concept of the vampire wants to go to yes. Mars. Now, do we want to give away why they want to go to well, Mars? Um, yeah, we, we're going to tell you in like the first issue. Um, it's, you know, so it's this, this before she became a vampire, our, our lead Hannah loved the stars. Oh. You know, she would, she would sit outside her village and just stare at them and you know it's a little bit of me i mean i am i'm i'm spoiler alert i'm a nerd uh and i love space stuff um so you know the skies and the stars and the colors of all that like it's always i'm always just in in awe of that um and so the the beginning like the nugget of vampires on mars was driving back from baltimore comic-con one day yeah you know, or one year and like you got eight hours, what are you going to do? You're just going to talk with your friends. Yeah. And the phrase was, I think I'd become a vampire if that meant I'd be around when we finally land on Mars. Yeah. Like that, that's my big thing is like, I want to be around for these cool breakthroughs and all that stuff. And a bummer of like what I might not be able to see. Um, and so that sentence just started, you know, myself and the other people in the car just riffing on it. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, I know what this story is. Like, I, I had the mile markers. Well, that must of, be so nice when it just comes to that. that I mean, that was part of it is yeah. like, oh, if this came together so quickly, then maybe there's something worth pursuing. Um, and I tried to, in, around that time, maybe about 10 years ago, I tried to put a, together a pitch for it. And it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. Um, this, was bef this was really when you needed 
a publisher to buy into it because self-publishing wasn't as prevalent, easy, easy, prevalent, easy, profitable, profitable you know, yeah. like, um, yes, this is not a money making business. No, no. I think I'm, I think I'm really happy now where like my stuff pays for itself like, and that's about it. Um, so, so I put it away cause I, you know, just like looking for the right artist. Um, and the person I'm working with right now, his name is Fernando Pinto tremendous artist um worked with him on the short story in the toddler apocalypse and um in a anthology full of really good talented artists and creators and collaborators he was i mean he was one of the best to work with okay. um and he's all he's always juggling a million projects he's like he's a pro's pro yeah and so i was like i think and and I was like, I would love to work with him again. And he had posted some some manga inspired pages, and he said, you know, something along the lines of, "I always want to do a story in this type of style, but nobody ever wants it." And I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, that's Vampires on Mars!" Like that that mix of. But he'd been looking for something that was outside of the genres he's expected yeah. to draw. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's like, nobody wants to do this. I'm like, that's all I want you to do. So it was a good marriage of the idea and the visual execution with somebody who wanted to do that. And know. then on top of it, for, like I said, Fernando's just an absolute pro. Um, so when we're reviving the idea and I'm trying to think of like, just review it from the 10 year old brain dump. One of the things was when I first put it together, it was like, oh, it's going to be a NASA thing. Like NASA can't get to Mars, but then it's, but now it's 2023 when I'm thinking about it. It's yeah. like, it wouldn't be NASA. Like if we, if right. NASA is not trying to get to Mars. Right. So let's tweak it a bit to, you know, the, the billionaire yeah. who's, this is an ego move right. for them and, and use that character and that character's motivations as a way to kind of like get our Hannah wormed right. in and take over. The and again, program. I don't want to get away too much, but I thought I remembered that they want to work together because they have a mutual goal. Well, in theory yeah, they have yeah. their own they have their own yeah. they have their own agendas yeah. but that because because i mean the general idea that i understood and george's going to correct me if not is a, a mission to mars is dangerous anything yes. can go wrong mars is dangerous yeah. you know just going to the moon we obviously had multiple issues and things yeah. like that but what about a creature that doesn't need to breathe and or worry about radiation and things like that that's yes those were those were some of the logical Right. Ideas. Consulting that, with a uh so I was gonna say astrologer. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say astrologer is a Gemini. Uh so so that was one of those like ideas that started. It was like, well, the vampires, like right, the the healing, they don't need to breathe air, um, you know, kind of all these things. So like, oh, sending vampires would make going to Mars easier. Make, right. right. That's the sci-fi, that, that's the B movie sci-fi presence of it. Yeah. So one of the things, so as we're putting this book together, um, one of the things I thought could help make it special, like knowing I was going to bring it to Kickstarter. Um, how can I, like I said, how can I make this special, not only for the reader, but as a campaign, as a, as a thing to present people? Um, I reached out to my favorite astronomer and science writer. His name is Phil Plate. Um, how do you spell Plate? P-L-A-I-T. I'll try and put it on the screen yeah. for you guys to look up. And yeah. He's an astronomer. astronomer and science writer. He's also known as the bad astronomer. Um, I discovered him through a series called How the Universe Works. Bad as in cool or bad as in he's not very good at The it. reason he got the name Bad Astronomer is he would go on and debunk bad astronomy. Oh, got it. Okay. You know, so he was kind of like the, the, the truth sayer or the this is how you have it wrong. Here's the real science behind it. Okay. But he's also got a great sense of humor. Um, and so I was like, what if what if I could interview him? Um, and I, I subscribe to his newsletter and okay. at the bottom it's, you know, if you want to send me a line, here's my email address, but please know I'm busy and it may take a while to respond. I was okay. like, I got nothing to lose. So I All think right. the subject line was something like interview requests. You know, okay, here's why I'm reaching out to you. Yeah. Interview requests. Could vampires survive the right. trip that to must Mars? Have been the hook. That must have got that, it right there. So I'm like, all right. If he doesn't respond in like two or three months, right? He says he's busy. Yeah. He's doing a bunch of stuff. I respect that. If he doesn't respond in two or three months, I'll follow up. 
less than 24 hours later is like, this is a new one. Let's do it. <laughs> so for 45 minutes, I talked to him, um, you know, a, a bit of, you know, the, 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 the origin story for Phil, yeah. um, a current assessment of where we are for trips to Mars, you know, the, the very real issues they're trying to solve. Yeah. Um, and then of course we ended up with, all right, now let's talk about, let's talk about the science behind sending vampires. Um, and it, it was great. It was, it was, it was a personalized 45 minute, you know, convention panel just okay. for me and we're breaking that interview up over the four issues oh awesome of it and so you're going to transcribe it and then include yes. it in the issues yeah and that's the great extra stuff i love that yeah. um and you're even doing a cloys and a pin what do they call the pins now it's cloys and a old does that date me there maybe a soft enamel soft enamel yeah i I, and I like seeing the logo on there well, you know what maybe we'll put the logo up on the screen for you guys to see it yeah and yeah, this is not the logo. It's sort of similar, but we wanted to do this. Um, this shirt uh, is for sale, right? We can get this. Not, not you did yet. Not publish it yet. Did not publish it yet. This is this is a super exclusive for you know the the oh, writer okay. and the logo creator. Okay. And this feature, so this image is from artist Alex Cormick. It's one of the variant oh, covers like that we have. Yeah, that we have uh, for the Kickstarter, and it's I think it perfectly encapsulates the vibe that we're going for on on this book you know we want it's it's a mix of sci-fi horror and dark humor um i've kind of like if you if you know the comic book chew um i love the over the top vibe and comedy of chew so it's kind of like that the over the top comedy of chew with the claustrophobic chase of aliens got it yeah um so you know when i, I was younger when we were younger you know um space shuttle miss missions were really big. We would watch them in class and things like that. And it was a big part of growing up in the, yep. especially in the eighties. Um, so, you know, younger viewers, I'm not sure you've seen an image like this, but they would release all pick images before the missions of all the astronauts going. They would always have this one thing where they were graduation, photo. graduation yeah. photo. The flag was always in the background. Sometimes there'd be the whole group of them, but just in their junk yeah. suits instead of this. So I think this was such a fantastic idea to do. Yeah. Um, and if it comes for sale, it will, George will advertise that or anything like that. I was going to include the link, but it's super secret insiders only shirts, apparently. Like, um, like I'll just bring you the total behind t-shirts are freaking expensive. Are you know, expensive. you know, this as, as the guy who kind of makes our merch, our swarm of eyes merch come to life. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. Yeah. Um, and I already have a basement full of comics that you know yeah. I am storing, and you know how much uh, storage T-shirts take up. Yep. So I'm not against the idea of selling T-shirts. I just want to make sure I'm not going to be left with bin after bin of T-shirt. I'm not in the T-shirt making business. I'm you know I I like making my funny books, but and selling my funny right. books. right. And the more colors you do on a shirt, the more expensive yeah. it is if you're going to do them screen printed. Again, a lot of shirts. And some of them that you see me wear are made through another third party company and they're made on demand. Um, but the creators don't make anything. You ever see yeah. any shirts that I happen to make and then wear? If I make $2, right. I'm not in it for the money. I mostly make them for myself, um, although I do sell a surprising amount of them. But if you were to make these, it'd be great to have them at a table, but then you're paying the full cost of them. Right. And then I'm, and now I'm transporting you, and, and more boxes me. of them. Um, but and, it might still might be a fun experiment. So yeah. you typically, uh, and our bass player, Jeff, also is a big time salesperson yeah. at a uh, very prolific uh, screen printing company yeah. uh, where we live. Um, so we're lucky to definitely have that. And hi, Jeff. Jeff actually watches these. Oh, hey, Jeff. Actually, I say that like you wouldn't. Like, Jeff <laughs> loves this stuff. Hi, Jeff. Richard. Yeah. So, so, so wait, wait, let me finish the talk. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got off track talking to Jeff. Jeff, help us. No, you this can do a minute. Well, sure. All Every the time, time band practice, together. yeah, and then throw in Jeff too, and it's 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 chaos. a lot of chaos. Um, but 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 a run of twelve shirts, try them out at a con because yeah. it's different. Because I can honestly say I can't think of a single independent artist or even bigger one that had shirts available, and that might it might hook them in. But if it does, then you say, well, it hooked them in. I got to get a bunch yeah. more made, and then they don't sell. Now you're stuck with them again. But anyway, yeah. so I'm I'm not against it. Um, what this I mean. This Kickstarter is going to be kind of like the biggest swing I've done on Kickstarter, you know, for 
for what I'm presenting for the amount I'm, you know, working to raise. Um, the hope is, you know, it's a four issue series that I'll be bringing to, you know, each one to Kickstarter that will grow the audience and build the audience. So this first one is really like, is there an right. audience? Like I, I, I love feel like this there's book. so many different angles to it too. I'm and, hoping. And, yeah. and being honest, Charlie spot is a very, I mean, it's not, I mean, just because I like superheroes doesn't mean that's all I like to read. Right. I like to read different things, but this is pretty, pretty different. This is human interest. Do you call yeah. it a phrase? What did you call it to me? Uh, to me the other day? Uh, what do we call it? Um, like magical slice of life. Magical slice of life. And some people just want comic books with girls in with boobs hanging out. Some people just want horror stuff, whatever right. it happens to be. Um, so something like this can have, I don't want to say as a limited audience. Once people get it, they would. But I mean, I Charlie Spots one of those books where it it I'm three plus years into it. I'm still refining how to pitch it. Right. Um, but I have also had the most number of people tell me I made them cry with Charlie. So right. Grown ass men right. telling me. Right. But that's I, yeah. after they get it in their hands. And that yes. was what I was going to say about vampires yeah. on Mars. You got multiple angles here in Hawks. That's and all the, I was the hook, it's, it's so much easier to like explain the premise of vampires on Mars. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm a fan of like, it's called vampires on Mars. We're sending a, a, a rocket full of vampires into into space is going to be chaos does that sound and it interesting to you at all right like you know do you at least does that make you want to flip through the book yeah, yeah. and then they flip through the book and they'll see fernando's art yeah. uh ellie wright is a ringo nominated colorist um and she did the colors on that our letterer is a ringo nominated letterer justin birch so you know you now, ringo hope... is that from the beatles that is that ringo exactly star? yeah nailed it Perfect. he's giving out comic awards now um it is the for those who don't know it's the baltimore comic-con awards i did not know that. so you know um one one of the uh more prestigious and and weighty awards and out there so you know we've got this killer group of like pros pros yeah doing it so you hope that the premise makes someone go all right yeah okay i haven't heard that one before right let me flip through it and then you see everything that Fernando, Ellie, and Justin yeah. are doing. It's like, oh, this is a pro book. And another advantage to that is, as we talked about before, George started writing, making these books with his creator friend and things like that, and other creators. And then that branched out. Um, your friend Diana even helped uh, yep. write one of the books, yep. Toddler Apocalypse. Yep. But then working with industry pros that are award winning, they can advertise this and get more buzz out there of this as well. Yep. So that's, that's got to be an advantage, but an expensive advantage yeah i hear so i hear i hear what you're saying um one i mean i am i'm lucky that i am in a place where i can yep. you know um that i can bring these people on and and pay them a an honest rate for what they do right um but the you know the but the plus it, well the plus of that is what we talked about earlier is being able to turn these departments over to people right. who know what they're right doing. that's what i'm saying it's yeah it's it's an upfront cost but you're going to get the result out of it uh, yes no doubt yeah and uh, you know what we could control was the creative process yeah. what we have made is something i'm i'm very proud of is professional it's you know it's it's clean like i said i'm really really proud of it now now it's the like we controlled what we could control now it's the scarier part of like, does anybody else think the idea of sending vampires into space could make a fun read? Once I knew that hook, um, my local comic shop, who is absolutely going to feature this book um, and carry That's it. Um, and uh, he does a weekly video of previews. It comes out every Wednesday. Here's what's new this week. Yep. He's definitely going to do that. I told him the premise and he was like, I'm in. That's awesome. Now, to be fair, because... This isn't just all, you know, candy canes and lemonade here. Is he's not a fan of manga art. Yep. He's like, but if it's a good enough story yep. and a good idea, I'll read it. But again, you're going to get people want to read it because it's manga yep. or the idea or a combination of them. So yep. there's a lot of hooks. But anyway, he, that'll be, yeah. that'll be up. To yeah. And I think even Fernando, who, you know, like really respects manga and yep. all of that, would even say like, this isn't manga. So it's inspired 
inspired. It's inspired by manga. It's like got said, a lot of kinetic energy. Yes, in and it. that and that's it's why. Movement. Like you can see, yeah. you feel things moving when I can see the preview pages. And Fernando has an incredible talent for when it's supposed to be energetic. Like his he energy jumps off the page. He is also great at acting. Like you know the smaller moments, the yeah. the, the tight close up type of stuff. Yeah. Every one of those is presenting a story as well. Hi, Fernando. Fer Fernando freaking rocks. Um, I'm Fernando has a book out right now on Kickstarter called Gun Punch, and by the time this comes out, it might be winding down. But you can always buy it afterwards. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Or will it be limited? So that's the other yeah. thing is a lot of Kickstarters for products, not just comic books. Once they're done, that's done. You've yeah. supported it, and those are the supporters. Yeah. Sort of like Hasbro does HasLab. HasLab is, hey, we're going to do our own version of a Kickstarter. We're going to come out with the Galactus, yeah. and we're going to limit to whoever that. Once that campaign is yeah. done, you can never buy that again but on the secondhand market. But George doesn't do that. George funds the project with the Kickstarter, gets it out the door, gets all the extras and prizes and everything to people, but then continues to sell it at his cons and everything like that so that yeah so the way so we, we don't know about fernando's project whether he's going to have it for sale afterwards right. or not but i sorry. believe he's also in argentina so huh or chile i'm sorry chile so yeah so it might be tough to get it from but if this comes out before i think april 9th go to find gun punch on kickstarter i've read it it's fantastic i will try to get this out before april 9th. <laughs> it's the good news is, is i don't think this is going to be a super uh complicated and in-depth thumbnail <laughs> it's probably going to be the two of us doing this like yeah hold on boom i might just screenshot that nailed right there. It. um and so maybe uh, that that's what holds me up is the thumbnails <laughs> i have two other thoughts before we get back into the fernando two things i yeah, yeah if i don't get these out i'm gonna go bonkers and george knows this i don't like to interrupt because i'm not listening to you i like to interrupt because if i don't get the thought out of my brain it's gone it's just gone why is she wearing such big earrings? You know, like the helmet's not going to go on. Like, right. does she want to be stylish on Mars? Like, I don't, I don't know. You know, Alex, driving me kind of nuts. Alex saw it that way, and you know, I like to give the artist a whole a, as it, much runway as possible. It's a comic that's book. What, that's, that's what he makes sense, but, right? Okay, that's that's what he saw. And Alex is is a pros pro. Alex is a friend. Um, Alex is fantastic and if this is what alex saw then i want to make sure alex's vision this comes is, to life this is like my wife's going out to, <laughs> and she wants to look ridiculous with like giant earrings and stuff that's how you go to mars baby and the second a, a thing a picture tells a thousand words it right? does. and yep. 750 of them are going to be why are there big hoop earrings there? and you know what's funny is the way my brain works the first thing i thought was there's a lot of blood on the face yeah but long hair i was like is Alex trying to really make sure, you know, it's feminine? Mm. Like it, it's, yeah. it, I don't know. Like, I mean, the artwork clearly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point. And, you know, maybe we'll do a deep dive with Alex someday. Hi, Alex. Um, but, you know, yeah, if, you know, that, that space suit is not very, you know, feminine right. shaped. Right. You know. But yeah, it's I I love it. That's the that's the main image we're using on the Kickstarter. Okay, like I, I said, because I think in one shot it tells you everything. It tells you the vibe of the book and whether, like I said, whether or not you want to know more or not. I try to get George to wear his shirt so we were matching, but he wasn't buying it. Second thing, completely <laughs> under the second thing. As you can see, for those who have watched my videos before, you see more of my room. We just changed the perspective so you see more. So George did not and I didn't have to be like, hey, show me your books. So I spread out and I always just see the line of books on the table behind me. I've been looking for that Catman book for a month. And I, I was like, there's Catman. Catman is right At there. At eye level. The books that I just took down before we put this beautiful array of books from George O'Connor at Homeless Comics was a bunch of weird, goofy, little known golden age books. Yeah. And I was like, you know, Catman would look so good there, even though it's technically a reprint for 1970 in Australia. I thought it would fit the look because the art's from the it, golden age. Because it's hidden behind the baseball? No, I just <laughs> don't look that high. But I found my Catman. <laughs> I found Catman. That's all that mattered to the story. So I got that out of the way. So Vampires on Mars, I'm going to get this out as soon as possible. When does the Kickstarter go live? It launches April 2nd. 
Tuesday, April 2nd, and it winds 2024. Down, 2024. For those watching in the future. Um, and it winds down Friday, April 26th. And you kind of alluded to it. The way Kickstarter works is you kind of have an all or nothing goal that you're raising, that you're looking to raise. So, you know, right now it's it's a it's a $6,000 uh, goal that we're going to. If we raise 590 Five thousand nine hundred ninety-five. You don't get it. We don't get it. No, he caught he. You you get to five thousand nine hundred and ninety. You're contributing ten bucks yourself. That's just how it works, folks. Uh, it I cannot uh, confirm, or confirm or deny, or deny that. that that some creators have uh, done that. So, um, but like I said, it's it's a book that has been stewing for years that I have believed in for years, um, and I'm really glad that I waited for the right artist to come around yeah. to make you know to to bring it to life to make it bigger than i ever thought it could and um you know it the the story behind the story is how much of your humanity would you give up to achieve your dreams um so you know like i said it's always a message like i said i like taking universal questions and then wrapping them up you know in something different and in this in this scenario it's that universal question wrapped up against a bunch of crazy vampires trying to make make it to Mars, and it goes terribly. It goes terribly wrong, much like my CGC unboxing videos. Sometimes, Wah. all I know is I think it sounds fantastic. And in the words of Philip J. Fry, "Shut up and take my money." So that be the, maybe that'll be the. This is actually like a bunch of ones. I sprung that on Jordan and know that. <laughs> this is our secret going gambling money later. Shut up and take my money. So I know there's that table. I love that. I'm going to say this. If people got this deep into the video, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but also I, what I've found with YouTube and doing this, I didn't think anybody was going to watch it. I just, like I said, bully my friends and family. My mom watches it like 18 times to get me lots of views. Hi mom. Thanks, mom. And, um, but the fact that I have all these subscribers yeah. and viewers and commenters, and I love interacting. Like, everybody's awesome. I had my first troll last Aww. video. He trolled and said, it was about unboxing. I got that Secret Wars number one and 8.5, which is absolute baloney. I just want to be clear about that. I'm still not over it yet. And the troll basically said, listen, you YouTubers doing unboxings need to get over it. You don't know any better than CGC. And you know how I responded? I said, "Yeah, you aren't you aren't necessarily wrong. No. You're not you're not wrong." Unfortunately, his username was Comic YouTubers Suck, so like it felt like it was a trolling on purpose. But we engaged in the conversation. Unfortunately, I don't know whether YouTube censored them, hmm. but it, I look like a crazy person because all the responses are just me talking to myself from his original comment. But you can kind of guess the conversation we're having. He even commented and said, wait, where did all my replies go? But then that <laughs> one disappeared too. So comic YouTubers suck. Thank you for commenting. We had a great conversation. By the end, he's like, hey, listen, I can't see the grade. Maybe you're right. He goes, maybe it is an 8.5. Maybe they are consistent. Good luck with your books in the future. That's how my only troll interaction went. And believe me, yeah. some of my friends, like Tom Anderson was like, I'm on it. I'm going to go rip that guy apart. I'm like, no, there's no reason to. But the point is, most of you people who are commenting on here you are just people. awesome. You're you people. You're telling me about the books you like mm -hmm. that you used to have when you got into it. I'm loving that interaction. And I know you're all hardcore comic fans. This isn't people who stumbled in because yeah. they saw a thumbnail with some, you know, girl's big butt or something like that, which I haven't tried yet to bring people in, but we're going to try eventually. You so gotta, I know you got to save that bullet. Right. You got to save that one when we're desperate. Um, get my wife's butt in here. And so they're... The point of all that is, is that you guys are comic fans yeah. and I'm hoping this appeals to you guys. You know, it's not just about all the Spider-Mans, the Supermans and Batmans. It's got to be about these independent creators because all those creators were independent creators beforehand. Yeah. You know, Sam Keith was in Comico Primer with a story before he was ever doing the Max and things like that. These people were independent. Todd McFarlane was doing some terrible book for DC. Maybe, well, maybe it was Dr. Fate or Hawk and Dove or something like that, but who cares about Hawk and Dove? I'm stupid. But anyway, um, but anyway, that that's it. These Kickstarters are coming out. And the big difference for George is he's usually does a Kickstarter for issue one, establishes some cred behind it, and then we'll sell you afterwards the rest of the series. He's doing a Kickstarter for each book. So yeah. he is really putting himself out on a limb here. 
and we'll have all the links to the Kickstarter, everything in the description, even if it is like a pre sign up to get notified when it goes live. And I yeah. would love it if you guys would do this and support an independent creator um, because there's going to be four issues, four issues, four issues, which means if each one's six thousand dollars, like he's trying to meet some good goals with a, a potentially an amazing book. And most importantly, my logo, yes. which is really why you should buy it. So thank you for letting me go through that with you and sharing that with all the folks here.